Um, just going through this a little bit more, again, that same map that, that um, we used to show the street hierarchy, um, thinking about this green box, taking that and, and preparing a unified design concept um, that tailors a high level concept. And that's what we'll show at the end of this conversation today. We'll eventually sort of be tailoring that to all the different street hierarchies that exist. So you've got your teal colored collector, you know, town center loop east, uh, you've got purple as the main street, so Park Place, both existing and the dashed line potential extension of that. There's a lot of sort of moving pieces um, in, in terms of you know what street typologies and hierarchy we want this really flexible uh, street design to adapt to. We also recognize that this is a really important opportunity to. Uh, sort of expand and build out the multimodal network. Um, you know, the, the town center is in a very key location within uh, Wilsonville near Memorial Park uh, with this new opportunity of the I-5 bridge, Ped Bridge to cross over the interstate there and connections to uh, neighborhoods on, on really every side. So we wanna make sure that active mobility is, is prime and key with all of our choices. So just quickly kind of jumping through a few of these hierarchy locations. Um, this is that same image you saw earlier of the Festival Street. And this is proposed on you know, Park Place, just on the western edge of Town Center Park. So taking advantage of an opportunity to allow the park and the street to really kind of spill together and blend together into an active people space in, in, in uh, many of these kind of scenarios where it would be a festival type street. That same street, the extension going southward, um, that dashed purple line pretty much runs through the drive aisle of a parking lot right now. So you can kind of hold in your mind's eye where that route goes. This would be a chance to really formalize that as a 60 foot street with on street parking and wide sidewalks and travel lanes. You know, all the trappings of a a sort of a contemporary urban place type street. Um, and to do so in a way that both complements existing buildings that are in this sort of south central portion of the town center and sets it up for future redevelopment in a really uh, coherent way. Some streets we might not even uh, consider cars. And, and this was a conversation from the town center plan over the past couple years. So this is the, the promenade location where it's emphasizing cycle tracks and storm water <clears throat> and in that promenade space, uh, locations for people to sit and gather, sit under a tree, take in the views um, and, and you know maybe go get a, a lemonade or a beer or a wine from the restaurant under that awning. And then just another look at uh, really emphasizing the pedestrian bicycle connections. Um, this is the kind of facility that we hope would be safe and welcoming and easy to navigate for folks going through the town center for both local travel, you know, and trips on, on bike and wheel uh, all over Wilsonville. A couple other uh, influential plans, you know, I've got six listed there. Um, really only talk about uh, two of these right now, um, but I wanna actually skip just a, a little bit and point out the urban forestry plan um, since uh, a few of you had mentioned your interest in the tree canopy and the, the landscaping planting features on the streetscape. The urban forestry plan is um, sort of getting underway at the city as we speak uh, right now. Our teams are in communication uh, and we'll definitely be sort of coordinating uh, the urban forestry uh, work with our streetscape work to make sure they're as harmonious as possible. And Ben, if I can interrupt, I will throw in a shameless plug for a couple of online open houses on November 17th. I believe it's at noon and at 630. They will be having an online open house uh, about that project and as well a survey will be going live on Let's Talk Wilsonville. So if that's a topic that is of interest to you, I would encourage you to go take a look. Um, one of the focus areas for that project is Town Center. And so um, yeah, it's going to be a very important one, not only for the town center as a whole, but for this project as well. I might go to those next week too. So. 
um, quickly through these, just, you know, the I-5 bridge, it's a major opportunity that we can take advantage of. Our team is not designing the bridge, and that project is, is a few steps ahead of us, but we're definitely acknowledging and trying to tie in with all the great work being done there. You know, the recent selection of the tide arch option just in the past few weeks as a recommendation. Um, looking at, at these three different plaza options, so the, the left and the middle being selected uh, as preferable for this plaza. And this landing plaza is in the town center. Um, so there's you know, pure connectivity that we want to keep in mind, um, as well as just the materials and, and streetscape palette and design aesthetic that we want to coordinate um, within reason. May have lost one. One other uh, quick thing on the, the bridge concept. Um, there's you know, hundreds and hundreds of people have participated in I-5 bridge events, you know, online surveys, uh, in-person events back when that was a thing. Um, and so we want to uh, sort of shamelessly steal some of the findings from that about the community's preference for art and sustainability features and trees and plantings um, and make sure that, you know, the details may be different, but that we're getting at the intent of the kind of spaces uh, that, that building these sort of things into your streetscape can help you create, you know, with key principles like gathering. Um, shelter from the rain was a, a big topic that came up at our 12 o'clock forum on the same, same project earlier today. And then other plans, you know, recently adopted is the wayfinding and signage plan. Um, and, and this is just to point out um, that the, the town center plan, you know, made some recommendations for different materials and design aesthetics. Um, we'll bring that up here in a second and have a conversation about it. Um, but the wayfinding and signage plan is, you know, one specific city implementation project that's taking that and, and really kind of putting the nuts and bolts together of how different streetscape elements come together. So we're gonna uh, take this under advisement and, and really think about um, how do we tie these things together into our work. And so a question to you all at this point, um, I didn't say this out loud at the time, but you know, the, the town center plan provided a lot of feedback um, and community interest expressed interest in a modern and natural design aesthetic and the use of wood, stone, glass, and brick as primary materials in the public realm and in the streetscape uh, within the town center. And so I want to ask you all, you know, do you support uh, these as some of the primary materials in the streetscape and just more broadly the, the modern and natural design aesthetic as a really guiding principle for us. So I welcome anything you want to speak up or put in the chat, or you can I'll, save I'll, for later. I'll, on. I'll speak up here. Um, that, that resonates with me. Um, when I read these words, I think of some of my favorite parks in Wilsonville, Morasse and the Town Center uh, Park. Um, although the town center has a little bit more um, concrete in it, I, I love the materials in Morasi Park and um, also the um, water treatment plant park. And I think um, this fit, fits that same vernacular uh, or you know palette of, of materials. So this sounds right to me. I'm also a big fan of uh, Cortan steel, um, but um, maybe that can fall under natural material. I don't know. And I would like to add that um, we already have a lot of brick, so we need to make sure it works with the brick, but I think we want to emphasize other materials. Um, so I wouldn't exclude brick, but I would uh, figure out how to use it without overemphasizing it. Yeah, it's a good point, thinking about primary materials versus accent materials. And, and some materials just speak more loudly than others. So we want to be sensitive as to how we use it. And we do have a comment in the chat as well. Uh, 
in agreement with the design aesthetics and also uh, using some of those design elements and aspects of the Padbridge project to guide the way uh, while keeping maintenance needs for those materials in mind. Thank you for those comments. Um, feel free to come back at us in the next 30 minutes too, if, if anything fresh comes to mind. Uh, about to hand it off to Colin here to kind of actually show you some conditions of the town center as it exists today and, and where he's drawing some of his design inspiration. Um, before handing it off to him, I think it's just kind of worth keeping in mind as you look at these images, um, what it means that different streets as, as you know, would be, um, some would be an entirely new street construction, either through vacant sites or parking lots uh, or, or some other unoccupied space. Others would be a significant redesign and others might just be a minor refresh. So there's a lot of different scales that we're kind of working at when we talk about the intervention in the streetscape here. Um, so that's just sort of a, a point of order to be cognizant of. Um, when thinking about how do you create a, a design theme um, that, that can operate, whether you're going all in or, or just uh, some, some minor embellishment to the streetscape. Thanks, so, Ben. Yeah, hand it off to Colin. Yeah, so uh, I'm just gonna go through a series of um, existing right-of-way images and talk about the opportunities to implement um, designs as, as we just looked at in the town center plan cross sections um, that Ben was showing earlier. Um, first one here is Park Place North and we kind of viewed it as is this utilitarian but disjointed section of uh, right away. It's it's kind of the main funnel into the down to, uh, into the town center but right now I mean, there's, you're looking at a, an existing or what used to be a, a cul-de-sac that's been transformed into a street that um, we're just going to look for opportunities to kind of iron that out and, and create a little more uniform um, path of travel. Uh, next one is Courtside, where um, we had mentioned earlier that some streets are going to not need too much intervention, maybe some slight refresh. This is kind of one of those examples. Um, it's got full sidewalks built out. It's got street lights, um, tree buffers from the street, uh, and then also transit facilities located along the right of way. Um, and what we're going to look for uh, is how to take those elements and um, integrate them into a holistic design across the entire right of way. Um, something else, um, there's a crosswalk here that's right next to a transit facility. Another opportunity that we would look for is to create um, shorter crossings. So talking about um, curb extensions where possible or bulb outs where possible to shorten those pedestrian crossings. And this is Wilsonville Road. Um, and reason that we included this is because we're gonna look at this area. Right now it's kind of uh, operates as, uh, or it's a, it functions as a main thoroughfare, but it's, it's kind of divisive um, in, in the sense that we're gonna look for opportunities to blend the two sides. You have the um, library, community library on the on image left and then town center image right and looking at opportunities to uh, get people safely across that right away. And we should point out we're not tackling Wilsonville Road from end to end. Um, that's a, a, a different beast altogether, but we will be looking at the way that some of the potential new street connections like that Park Place extension come into uh, Wilsonville Road. And if I remember correctly, that would be just a little bit deeper into this image is where that intersection would occur. And looking at Town Center Loop West, um, the uninviting but promising comment or, or title, I think alludes to um, there, the uninviting part is you kind of right now, you. you when you walk across town center and you, you end up at uh, town center loop west, it's kind of abrupt and it's this woe moment of, oh, there's cars passing in front of me and the sidewalk just ends. Um, and then you have I-5 across the, uh, the way there. And I think one of the opportunities we would look at, especially here, is looking at acoustics. How do we 
create an inviting experience for people along this right of way um, while mitigating sound and, and the noise and distraction of I-5. Yeah, this is, this is very near where the I-5 bridge lands in as well. And this is a park place at Courtside where this is be an example of kind of a major change area. This, this uh, deals with the cross section that was a festival street. So we're talking about um, opportunities to eliminate curbs altogether, to create a curbless environment where people can walk freely um, across the street. Um, there's no grade changes, um, creating outdoor, uh, per, less programmed areas, but outdoor opportunities for gathering spaces um, adjacent to existing businesses, as well as um, utilizing the park um, as a community asset and engaging with the street more. And so the next few images are gonna be talking um, more about existing materials and existing furnishings that we saw um, when we visited Wilsonville. And the first one is uh, in Town Center Park, um, this theme of metal glass uh, structures. Um, we really liked, and we've heard from community feedback that um, this is kind of a, a, a coveted area, especially in inclement weather. Um, and we were, we're going to look for opportunities to create more of these gathering, covered gathering spaces, protected gathering spaces. And the uh, Oregon Korean War Memorial in Town Center Park, uh, looking at natural, um, you know, a natural stone look, um, simple, clean, also an ode to um, uh, something obviously that uh, resonates within the culture of Wilsonville um, in terms of, um, you know, respect for, for veterans and, and um, the history of its community members. And dealing with transit stops, uh, again, um, that simple kind of modern aesthetic uh, metal. Um, we're going to be looking at how and where to implement those along right of ways. And I liked this example. Um, so stormwater is a feature that we will be looking at um, when we talk about designing these streets. And I liked this image because it was an example of uh, not only a recent project, but also a project that to me talks about the idea and of blurring private uh, and public land or you know owner public public and private ownership where maybe there's a way to design on on or uh, on private land a way to integrate that into the streetscape it might be owned by two different people but it kind of seems seamless in that in that regard and this was kind of the um, I think this is where our, our tour ended and it, it was kind of the idea of how can we incorporate landmarks. Um, this is an existing landmark, uh, the Apache statue, and how do we create more of these and create a, a system of landmarks and nodes that people as they travel through um, the town center, how, you know, in terms of orienting and knowing, okay, I'm here, I know I'm meeting by the uh, Apache statue, or I know that I'm um, on the, at the south portion of uh, town center because I'm in front of this water feature. Um, so we're gonna look for more opportunities to do landmarks. And in terms of, again, materials, this is a city hall as it sits today. And um, that brick metal glass aesthetic, um, something that we would look as an opportunity to do would be to engage the uh, street a little better. So instead of having um, entrances that face, main entrances that face the rear or um, parking areas. Uh, we'll look for opportunities to engage um, street frontages. And then the next one, let's see. Oh, right. So existing lighting, um, again, modern, clean aesthetic, um, kind of a, a variety. Um, getting into furnishings. Um, looking at um, opportunities for synthetic materials. So um, composite instead of timber, um, a little warmer in the winter. Um, 
and then existing park furnishings. And as Martin mentioned, the beloved Maras Plaza and uh, all it, I think what we envision for, um, not for the park, but for this project is engaging. It feels like it's part of the town center. It technically is across the street, but um, looking to engage that in, as a community asset and also taking note of um, the design aesthetic and the materials used. And um, something that we had heard earlier as feedback was the, um, the enjoyment of water play in the summer. So looking for ways to engage and activate spaces in that manner. Um, again, active and uh, landmark-esque in Town Center Park. You have these large concrete um, water play areas, but also can function if, you know, designed appropriately, can function as seating, can function as a gathering space. Um, so multi-purpose and iconic. Yeah, thank you, Colin, for showing us around a little bit on a sunnier day. <laughs> so a question to you all, you know, are there designs and, and key features in the town center today that you like and, and want to build upon for the streetscape? Well, one thing comes to mind for me, um, and maybe actually the other participant here who uh, is a tree specialist uh, agrees with me or not, but um, I like that there are uh, some, um, there seem to be cherry trees left in the, sprinkled throughout the town center. And I don't know if that has anything to do with uh, the heritage of the place, um, but I like them. I like how they fly, flower and um, um, those trees together with some of the pioneer uh, planted fruit trees in uh, the park, Morasi Park, um, I think add some real interest to the place because you know you can see when it's when they're blooming and that's an announcement of spring and you can see when they're bearing fruit and that's an announcement of harvest and fall to come and um, to me that's a that's a mean of meaningful type of tree that um, is experiential and um, I would like to see that included in in the streetscape so that um, these streets can tell a story of time maybe. Good point, points, Martin, thank you. So to comment on that, the cherry is on the, um, I don't remember what it's called, if it's courtside or park place, the portion that will be taken away as a street and made into a open green space. It's identified on the plan. That's where there's a series of cherry trees that we planted in the yeah. early 80s. In the median, right? Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. I think those are the only cherry trees that I'm aware of currently, unless they're in a park. Uh, the one thing I would like to say is um, ornamental pears were used a lot in phase three of the town center development. So that'd be the theater and um, where U.S. Bank is and uh, the pads that surround it, including our office building. And uh, a planner that was here at the time, Bob Hoffman, had begged me not to use any more of the ornamental pears because they have a short life, they have a weak structure, they never look like much. And I used some because I wanted to tie into the theater and they're such miserable trees that I just took them out and replaced them with beach, um, at columnar beaches uh, to have more of an interesting uh, look. But I'd like to see where we mix a little more some red leaf trees as well as green and minimize or, or phase out any of the ornamental pears because they're just not the kind of quality tree that this area deserves. We and will then, uh, learn from your experience, Susan, thank you. Yes, <laughs> and a uh, couple other things. I wanted to mention, really like the idea of the landmarks. Um, 
we, um, when we developed our office building, we were going to be given one of the more standard utilitarian looking bus stops uh, that are used throughout the rest of town because the city had bought a mass quantity of them and that's just what was coming our way. And we said, no, we'll pay for one like the one that you took an image of by the uh, city hall. And so I liked that you identified that as a positive feature and that we should, I, I would like to see in the plan that it's specifically designated, that it be um, in keeping with that, not that specific design, but kind of a higher end and, and maybe our bus stops in this area are similar I, or different, I don't know, but um, I would hate to see those lesser uh, bus stops in the area. I'd like to see more of the better quality ones. And then my last well, two more comments. The uh, cul-de-sac that um, was turned into a road, the portion that is in the Regal Cinema parking lot, that um, is actually an easement, I believe. So when Regal Cinema came in, at the last minute, the city said, we want this to be a road. So they, um, the problem was is that the theater was required to have a massive amount of parking and it would have, they wouldn't have been able to get the head in parking that they have on one side. So the compromise was to make that an easement. So I just want to point out, I'm not sure that that's a city owned street uh, and the city may want to look at that. And then last, the um, where the cherry trees are, I had made a note that I wonder if that would be a good place for a pedestrian promenade. Oh. But then as you went on and we're showing the uh, possibility for in interactive streetscapes or uh, water features and covered area, you know, maybe that, I, I just think that that's going to be an opportunity, changing that street to open space. You know, maybe we can use it to meet some of the goals you've mentioned. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Susan. Good, good points all. And I can clarify on the right of way. I, I, know, I do believe that started out as an easement, but that is now city right of way, at least on that stretch where the, the road is. Um, and I know the council has expressed interest in the past of cleaning that up because you know, it's just a very awkward transition for everybody. But I know they wanted to see what came out of the Thames on our planning process. And so this this project will be um, a pretty big guide in terms of how that area gets fixed and doesn't look like an old cul-de-sac anymore. And it is a safety issue mm -hmm. coming out of our parking lot where it's a cul-de-sac for a sight line. People can't see cars coming from the north. So we'll be glad when that's uh, straightened out. Thank you. Thank you. And we do have a, a couple of comments as well from the chat. Uh, one noting that uh, currently uh, they consider that what we have in the town center is attractive and appealing, but what we don't have is standardization across the entire town center that a lot of the features, um, you know, kind of are just cobbled together. And so that this is an opportunity uh, to, to create a standardized theme that we can use um, also noting to make sure uh, about having a clear line uh, to the center of town center from the pad bridge uh, for uh, the pedestrians and the non-motorized vehicles, so people on bike or scooter. And I can note that the town center plan does call uh, for more of a multimodal linkage, linkage between those areas, uh, but that of course will take time to as some of these infrastructure investments start being made um, but the goal is to have that be a very clear uh, connection so that you can get from the pad bridge and you can get all the way to memorial park safely in a multimodal manner all right any uh final thoughts on this otherwise we'll keep 
forging ahead a little bit. All right. And finally, we will get into a little bit of the streetscape concept conversation here. Um, I'll give you a little preview and then uh, Colin will show you some more details. Um, first, I want to have this quick conversation about what streetscapes can do for you. Sort of blast through a couple examples from communities you may know, uh, like here in Lake Oswego, uh, the way that streets come together to use, you know, uh, sort of a robust palette of materials like brick to really define a pedestrian space, uh, ample seating, street trees, and even a sort of a refined use of parking to help divide space up. Down in Southeast Portland, um, you know, this used to be a, a very, very nasty road, still is in many places, but at least in these couple blocks, um, it's been road dieted. They've, they've narrowed up the road and added uh, bike lanes. You can't quite see here, but also opportunities to really widen the sidewalk and allow street seating and dining space to spill out. Uh, and, and these really transparent um, big windows really help kind of link the indoor and outdoor spaces. Uh, this is a pre-COVID photo, so uh, you, you could you could go both sides of that glass. But uh, up in Seattle, uh, an example near where my sister lives, as it happens. But we talked a lot about facilities for um, walking and biking routes. You know, in some instances, those could be very casual, kind of shared streets, like that Festival Street. In other instances, you might want more protection and separation, like with an official cycle track, like we have with this two-way example that's protected by parking and that uses landscaping to help define um, transit from cars, from bikes, from, from people. Uh, so some of that's in the cross sections and, and we'll be continuing to refine that. Streets that adapt to many different uses, um, you know, in this photo there's uh, a, a one-year-old building and a hundred-year-old building, all in a regenerated district um, and using the streetscape and a clean palette of native plants and local materials to try to tie all of that together. Uh, something we've seen a, a lot of this year, you know, turning streets over to outdoor eateries um, and, and really kind of reminding people of the way that streets can be people spaces before their car spaces. Uh, we want to make sure that the town center streets have this kind of flexibility uh, to be used this way for decades to come and to have that kind of design intentionality. Some streetscapes have a very signature look. You know, this is Truckee, California that kind of has gone all in on, on railroad artifacts and stone pavers um, and tying into slightly kitschy looking building faces. You know, say what you will about it, but it's a distinct look and, and something to you know, at least consider in Wilsonville. Um, it's one way of kind of just defining a signature district. You know, we're definitely looking for unified and flexible street designs. Uh, this is in McMinnville, Alpine Avenue, where it's a very um, sort of nuanced design where every foot uh, is kind of uniquely designed, but with the intention of providing access to businesses and homes uh, breweries, industrial uses, freight access, you know, a very flexible street uh, that kind of fits into, you know, this unique both horizontal and vertical streetscape environment. And just quickly to show some, you know, a few before and afters of streetscape transformation, uh, a location in Albany, Oregon, you know, pretty typical wide undefined street, uh, really regenerated. Um, with uh, a remarkably wide sidewalk, two rows of trees, you know, movable planters and bike racks and benches. Um, so just indicative of, of what kind of opportunity you can do, uh, take advantage of to, to reclaim some of that space. Another up near Seattle on Bainbridge Island, um, a streetscape that's gone through a lot of evolution in their downtown Main Street, but has really kind of gone all in on massive curb extensions and really high visibility planters, uh, seating everywhere. Um, and though cars are certainly able to use this space, uh, it's a very kind of low speed kind of environment that really makes walking and biking uh, the primary way of moving around. 
So those are just a couple examples and, and we want to ask, you know, is there anything from those images that really resonated with you? Um, the designs or the uses of the street that you really want us to keep in mind for the Wilsonville streetscape concepts. And as the group thinks about that for a minute, I did get a couple more comments in the chat. Uh, a comment about wanting to see rain gardens included holistically and also uh, that currently town center uh, in areas is very dark so that we want to keep in mind having performance standards uh, for lighting particularly in areas where there are pedestrians um, it was also noted the look of foster road um, clean but functional um, so I, I don't know if this is uh, what part of foster road in particular you're looking at um, over in the Lance Town Center or elsewhere. Um, so if you want to clarify, um, let us know. Uh, there was a, a, a vote of positivity for the wooden light posts that were just in your slides, as well as noting that uh, the separation uh, between cars and people by using plants was desired. Yeah, that Foster, Foster Road photo uh, was yeah. near Southeast yeah. 72nd. Okay getting in where they've cleaned up that intersection considerably. Um, any other things you, you saw in those photos that you like or other communities you've been to uh, that you really draw inspiration from the streetscape? And I think Philip might have a prompt on let's talk Wilsonville along those same lines if you want to bring that up, Philip. Yeah, um, I guess now is a good time to talk about that. So we also have a additional outreach question on Let's Talk Wilsonville right now. And there is no end date to that question thus far. So we're asking, are there streetscape designs in other places in the region or around the world? If you've taken a trip somewhere and there's a streetscape that stood out to you, um, tell us why you liked it and why you'd like us to consider it for town center and it'll let you um, write as much as you'd like to get your point across and you can also add pictures so if you do have a picture or want to google um, that specific street or public space or streetscape element you can attach uh, that and give us a graphic example of what um, what you liked and um, we will also be drawing um, inspiration for the project from the feedback we, re we received there. So um, if you do uh, go on Let's Talk, that would be a good place to add any other thoughts you may have. And if you do want to follow the project as it continues to go on, which I will be updating that page throughout the course of the project, at the very bottom, you can follow and subscribe for updates to the project and get an email uh, or notification um, whenever we move on to different phases of outreach and so on. So um, uh, if you want to participate that way, that would also be very helpful to the project. And then quickly, one last comment about uh, the examples. Uh, it was noted they rely on materials and grade changes to help organize just the streetscape and the thought is uh, more desirable than using striping because striping is very vehicularly oriented. All right, good points all. Um, all right, in our closing few minutes here, finally, uh, we will uh, hand it over to Colin here to kind of give a preview of what's up for the next couple months in this project. Um, and to preface that quickly, just a sort of a reminder um, that these streetscape designs are going to be tailored to these unique locations and, and unique hierarchies that the town center plan, um, you know, established 18 months ago. And so what Colin is doing is really trying to figure out and, and think through that high level theme. Then in the coming months, we'll be thinking about how that theme or themes apply in these specific locations um, to respond to site contexts and the different transportation needs of of, of each of those segments. So hand it off to Colin here. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so just to reiterate, we're in the very, very preliminary stages of design. Um, really thinking about how we define gathering versus motive spaces, uh, both spatially and experientially along a streetscape. Uh, and to help guide this thinking and design, we started to develop 
uh, three possible themes to help tell a story and inform decisions. And uh, these major, three major themes were agriculture, river, and technology. Um, <clears throat> and just to be clear, um, we're not choosing just one of these and, and running with it. Um, the final concept is going to most likely be a combination of all three. Um, and this was just like an exercise to, to put thoughts on paper and develop a streetscape story. So the first one was uh, agricultural legacy. And when we think about agriculture as an organizing theme, we're thinking structured, purposeful design elements um, in a uniform sequence of events. And what that might look like, um, these are some examples of uh, furnishings and, and gathering spaces, very structured gathering spaces, um, grid-like, think row crops, um, think you know, hay bales uh, evenly spaced in a field that have just been produced by a tractor as it goes through, you know. Um, and um, you, the, in terms of materials, very rustic materials, very, um, again, useful, purposeful. Um, when you talk about uh, useful and purposeful, um, I think of um, also reusable. So um, woods, stones, um, those types of materials. Uh, the second design concept would be technological innovation. Um, talking about modularity, simplicity, contrast. Um, when we think of tech as a theme, um, the first thing that came to my mind was a circuit board. And as you abstract the thought of a circuit board and start to define spaces, we're really thinking about blurring the line between gathering space and mode of spaces. So um, less programmed space, more kind of opportunity to, for a space to serve um, needs and functions of that moment, if you will. Um, again, talking about contrast, talking about um, literal technology along a streetscape um, with the um, increase of electric vehicles on our roads and um, charging stations for pedestrians and, and uh, visitors. Um, bottom left image is an example of something that might function um, as seats, but could also be some kind of public art element. Um, and the bottom right is, again, uh, spaces that are less defined, um, creating contrast in materials. And the third and final concept would be the idea of a uh, river, um, organic flow, natural elements, um, and, and this fluid movement through space. Um, and when we really explore this idea of, of a flowing river, um, we're really defining spaces as, as a series of flows and eddies created by both hardscape and softscape elements. So um, what that might look like, um, uh, movements of paths, uh, the, the top left image would be an example of a chicane in a bikeway, um, maybe signalizing that an intersection is coming instead of having um, a squared off bike um, what do you call this? Um, spike the front of intersections. They're just they're square and they're very defined. Um, this is just same thing, but more organic. Yes, thank you. Um, and then the idea of bringing uh, water as an element into streetscapes. Um, maybe it's a drainage pattern. Maybe it's a more formalized uh, water feature. Um, and then bottom, the larger image on the bottom is an example of this eddy, this uh, space where you're moving along a path um, and then there's this eddy, this gathering space um, where things slow down and you can relax. So thank you, Colin, for walking us through those quickly and, and know that we're, you know, we are in the very early stages of, of this and, and it'll be a really important opportunity for you all at forum number two in 2021 to come back and, and see more robustness to these. Um, I recognize we're in overtime, so if you have to head off, um, thank you for your time, but I do want to ask for one closing question of, do you think the, the themes that Colin just discussed, um, what do you think of them? And, and do you think they're consistent with the community's vision and goals for the future of the town center? Put a different way, are we generally heading on the right track? I'll go first again. Um... I, I think you're on the right track. I do agree with Andrew, who 
left a note in the chat that um, of the three directions you're choosing, um, technology is the least appealing to me. It does not really resonate for me personally with, with what the town center is or could be about. Um, and then I have one more comment. Um, maybe you can take the river concept and look at it a little bit broader and tie it in with the landscape in general that has formed or the, within which Wilsonville has, has um, established itself. Because to me, it's, it's the river. It's the fact that we're on the valley floor, but also um, the canyons that cut through that valley floor towards the river and then the views of the hillsides around um, Wilsonville are, are to me pretty typical um, um, Wilsonville experiences. So. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that broader context. I see in the chat that um, Martin was asking about the horse theme. The town center horse theme was based on the fact that in the um, outlying area immediately around Wilsonville, there's world class. Um, horse uh, equestrian um, stables and events have been held there. People from around the world fly in to participate in that. And that's where that horse design came from, was trying to create it, uh, highlight that point. So it wasn't based on a horse from like a plow horse uh, for farming, but more uh, the high level of equestrian um, and raising of thoroughbreds in that area. So Martin's asking, is that something that should be continued or moved away from? And I don't have an opinion. I'm just stating what, what, what that's based Thank you. That's that's good to know. And that makes sense. Yeah, I've noticed that outside of town. Yeah, I don't have an opinion on it either. We probably won't go so far as to, you know, inlay horseshoes in the concrete, but it's a, a good question to be thinking about uh, to take a, a broader uh, kind of collection of the Wilsonville region, the agricultural heritage, the, the unique terrain and geography formed by the rivers and the glaciers and the wind, taking all of that in. Any um, final thoughts uh, on this question or anything else over the last hour? Yeah, I have, I have one more question. Um, the uh, dashed purple line, that's a new street that um, looks like it's going to be intersection, intersecting with Wilsonville Road between the two existing intersections. Is that um, envisioned to be a uh, um, full service street? I mean, with, for all modes, or is there an idea to maybe um, make that a promenade? Promenade, yeah. You're talking about this one Just here. a question. Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, so that is the future Main Street for town. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's um, really kind of one of the prominent pieces. Uh, so it will be, um, I believe the cross section does not have bike lanes just because it is narrower. There are some constraints with, you know, kind of existing lane use patterns there. Um, but it will be, it really is envisioned to be that kind of pedestrian oriented mixed use environment there. Uh, so it won't be, um, a pedestrian only promenade. However, I think it's probably one of the most prominent streets that we'll yeah. be very focused on in the streetscape plan. Okay, now I remember, I remember it from the town center planning. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Yeah, that is, that is great. Um, you know, um, just ahead, uh, I would, I would recommend that you keep that um, uh, very intimate in terms of scale and uh, yes, wide sidewalks, but maybe that's a street where you don't also try to fit in um, bike uh, facilities. I've just recently been in Willamette Falls neighborhoods in West Lynn uh, where they're um, rebuilding 
the Main Street drag, and I'm, I'm really disappointed in what they did to that historic street. Um, yes, it's going to get some great cycle tracks, but it, it appears to me that they've taken all the charm and character out of that street and made it super wide. So I, I recommend that you be very careful with the dimensioning of a Main Street feature, and maybe that's a street that, you know, um, you don't try to cram in all the latest bike facilities just because that's the the most hip thing to do in in the profession right now so yeah thank you i think uh the, the cross sections that are being adopted in the towns in our plan um really i think recognize that and focus a lot of the uh more bike specific facilities on some of the other cross sections as well as there are some cycle tracks planned really to connect where the Pad Bridge is over to Morasse Plaza. So that will go, you know, kind of skirt around the town center park, but not necessarily go into the main street. So. Yeah, all part of a system where, you know, very quality bike facilities on town center east, um, as well as just on the east side. I think I've lost my little mouse here, but, um, you know, a multi use path and off trail system that would be over here on kind of the western edge of the town center. So that's giving you that, that bicycling opportunity that then, you know, potentially frees up this extension to Park Place to be more of a, a commercial Main Street kind of feel. All part of the network. Um, well, again, as, as Philip mentioned, you know, hop on Let's talk Wilsonville. There's a prompt question there. Um, you can sign up for email updates on the project. Um, if you heard about this forum, you'll definitely hear about the next forum that will be in the first couple months of 2021. Um, and we'll continue to post material on Let's Talk to keep folks updated. Um, I, so I certainly welcome any closing comments you have and, and Kim and Philip and I will stay on this call uh, as late in the, into the night as folks want. Um, but thank you all for your, your input and attention. I really do appreciate uh, your, your, your sensitive and kind of really locally inspired comments tonight. And we do have one question on here about a skateboard park, and that is one of the implementation items that is in the town center plan. Uh, so that is still, um, that's not so much a focus of the streetscape project in particular, um, but that is something that uh, is still moving forward as part of the overall town center plan implementation. Hang 10. That's not skateboarding. Never mind. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for participating. We really appreciate it. And, um, you know, like we said, if you have any other ideas, please send them our way. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you.